Hi, this is Catherine O'Brien of Celtic College Consultants. And tonight I wanted to talk for a few minutes about transitions and how we can help our kids deal with transitions. Because when we are facing change, a lot of fear happens. And when we break that down, we're feeling powerless, hopeless, and we're very aware that we are unable to control any, anything. And so we're feeling very fearful. All of that makes sense. So let's go through three tips for helping people deal with change and helping our kids deal with change, whether it's changing schools, uh, dealing with a new teacher, a new relationship, uh, starting um, at a new sport or a new club or moving to campus, a big, huge transition. So the first tip, of course, is to be flexible. Things are going to be different. So we can't expect everything to stay the same as it was. We tend to, when we become afraid, get defensive, kind of put up a wall, keep people away, and we're trying to cling to what we knew, what was comfortable, what was known, and some sense of control. So if we can discipline ourselves, learn to not be defensive, and learn to embrace the change. And it's one of those phrases that irks me because what does that mean? So I'm going to suggest to you that that part of at least what that means to embrace change is to break it open and look for new opportunities because things have changed. So you don't have the same opportunities you used to have. You're going to have some new opportunities. Some of those will be unattractive. Some of those will be wonderful and very attractive. Some of those hopefully will be similar to things from whatever the situation was before the change happened. Secondly, face your fears. Now, easier said than done, but I strongly encourage pen and paper for this one. Not a phone, certainly not a lot of texting back and forth with friends, but a quiet space, maybe some nice music, maybe a nice candle or something for some nice scent. Get ourselves in a comfortable place. We're taking a bath. We're just in our room. We're snuggled up someplace where we feel safe with our piece of paper and our pen. And write down what our fears are. Get them out of our head where they're rolling around and driving us crazy. Put them down on the paper. I'm afraid no one's going to like me. I'm afraid everybody's going to laugh at me. Whatever those fears are, write them down. Give yourself space. Be good to yourself with that nurturing environment that you've created with the music and the environment and the soft blanket or whatever you need. And write them down. What are you afraid of? What's scary about this new situation? And then continuing to work on keeping yourself calm. And so if that means you need to go and, you know, scream or hit a tree or run around the block three times or, or just take some time to listen to the next song in silence, whatever it is that you need to kind of center yourself again, look at the fears and analyze them. What is going on in this fear? What's underneath it? What can I control related to this fear? What skills and abilities and resources do I have related to dealing with this fear? What opportunities are related to this fear? What vulnerabilities are related to the fear? Try to break it open and think about it. Some of the fears are gonna go away in this process because you're like, oh, that's not a big deal. I can handle that. There's some options, I got this one. And they're gonna crumble and just go away. Others are going to pose challenges. And we may or may not know what to do to handle that challenge right away. And that's okay at this stage. The third thing is to focus on what you can control. So by taking the minute to write down the fears and analyzing them and breaking them up a little bit, it gives you some idea of the things you can control. The biggest thing that we can control in any situation is ourselves. So what does that mean? That means we can control our attitude, 
Because I can walk into a new situation and be all like, oh, everybody's going to hate me. And this is awful. And I'm just kind of all crunched up. And I'm like, I've got this angry, defensive attitude. Or I can walk in, you know, normally I'm real boisterous or whatever. I'm just going to be quiet and observe. I want to get the lay of the land here, kind of stay neutral. Or depending on our personalities and our strength right now, I'm going to be really enthusiastic and just dive in. I, I just, I look forward to this. I think this is cool. I'm going to meet some new people, whatever the situation is. Okay. But we can control our attitude and our attitude is going to make a big difference on how we experience the new situation. We also can control our actions. They're very related as in my example, you could obviously see. The other thing we can control is our familiarity we can get more information. <coughs> Excuse me. For example, one of the things that I ask all of my seniors to do in the spring, they've accepted their school. They know I'm going to ABC University. I am so excited about going to my college. I'm planning to start majoring in this, blah, blah, blah. Okay. They are starting to picture they're going to live in this climate. It's close to home. It's far from home, whatever all those things are. Okay. But then also take the time to go check out the Newman Center or whatever religious center that they would be interested in. Go look at the list of clubs. What, what's going on on that campus that is something you're interested in? And have a short list. There's the three groups I am going to look for when I'm on campus. That's what I'm gonna start with. But before I do that research, I don't know what the group is called. I don't know where they meet. I don't know how to find them. And a lot of times these days there's websites and there's information. And so you can reach out even before you're on campus. Say, hey, I'm coming, I'm an incoming freshman. I've got a ton of experience as chess and I love this. And I'm really looking forward to joining the group and getting involved in some tournaments and da, 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 da. You know, or I can't wait to get on the Quidditch team and well, this is what I've done. And they're like, great, new person. So already you're starting to build a bridge to this new place. And now it's not such a new place. And emails are pretty safe. Text message is pretty safe. So it's a great way to have some information to start building some familiarity and some bridges into a new situation. So whenever possible, get information. We're moving someplace. Look at a map. What's around? What's the topography? What should I expect? Oh, there's a lot of public transit or that's really bike friendly or it's just not. It's whatever it is. Okay, that information piece, coupled with our awareness of our fears, our concerns, the opportunities we're looking for, the opportunities we think we're seeing, can be really helpful to help us create a plan of what to do to get ourselves settled into the new situation. And that will help us know what actions to take and help us to have a good attitude about it so that we can be flexible. So people say be flexible when there's change. It's like, what does this mean? So I thought it would take some time to break down, what does it mean to be flexible? What does it mean to embrace change? How can we approach a transition? How can we help our kids approach transitions? How can we help them redirect their energy and their talents so that they can thrive in a new situation to make the most of the new opportunities? So they're not just being defensive. No, 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 no. Oh gosh, this, I want the old place. I want the old situation. But they can really learn to thrive and blossom in that new situation. Thank you.